Yo, what up? We back. Another edition of CT's RPT. Real Prison Talk with Wes. And today, we're going to have my man Bezel on the show, man. He called up from Carl Robinson Correctional Facility. Where the phone at? Because I'm waiting for him. We're waiting for him to call right now. I spoke to him. He should be calling any minute now. I just want to let y'all know that this dude's been affiliated as a gang member. So we have to be careful with what we say and how we talk because he's in general population right now. He's not in the gang block, and I want to keep it that way. I don't want my brother getting back affiliated and jammed up with that shit. <clears throat> this is him right here. Yo, what's good, Brody? Yeah, yo, we doing the show, uh, CT's RPT, Real Prison Talk with Wes. We got my man Bezel on the line calling uh, from Carl Robinson Correctional. Um, Bezel, just uh, just tell the people first and foremost, tell the people what you went, tell the people how much time you got sentenced for and what you went there for. All right, that's shit. That's crazy. They love giving them shit. That's the same shit. I got a twenty year sentence. Um, get them, get it, get the people a brief description of your case, right quick, Bezel. Uh, my shit was like, you know, I was fucked up. I was in twenty twelve. One day, my son called me. I was with my, I was with my shorty. My man called me. He was all panicking and shit. He's like, yo, niggas over here talking about they got guns. They about to come shoot me. So I pulled up over there. At his crib. When I get to the crib and I saw it though, I'm like, what happened? First of all, when I'm across the street from his crib, is the nigga he's talking about. Mm-hmm. So I see them, he on the stoop, I'm like, what happened? He gets to tell me what happened. So I thought he's short, he told me he made a sale in the driveway. He came out ripping. He, you know, he told him, you know, he got arguing. He's talking this shit. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, why are you arguing with the people you made a sale in the driveway? You wrong. Yeah. So they, 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 they ain't know the bezel that I know, basically. Weaponry. So I'm like, out of my head. 
Mm-hmm. They know me. Mm-hmm. That was how to break the gun down. Yeah. I go to my camp, I change my clothes, I grab the key. Come back. I stop to get my man real quick. Go get my man. You know, we snatch him up, we pull back up. Man, when I left, I was like, wait right here. They really waited. <laughs> I pull back up, they really waited. They were looking, they looking tough. They were looking tough. tough. So, so that shit, that shit crazy. That was some movie. That that shit sound like some movie shit. Yo, telling it, tell tell the people how you actually got caught for this shit though. Happened to the nigga that had the problem in the first place. Like, did he did he get bagged too? The nigga that called you over there that made the cell in the driveway. He got bagged with you? Nah, nah, he good. Only way he get bagged is by tell. No, I wasn't doing no shit like that. He out there living his life, you know, paying that he doing good. Then out there winning, niggas telling me he getting to the bag. Nigga ain't sent me a dollar. Nigga never wrote me. Never sent me a picture. Damn. I try to fuck my bitch. Damn. So, so, so what happened, what happened with the nigga that was with you, that, that you took with you when he called you? Oh, my man. I'm he, told. Say that again? That's what he told. He told on me. Word. That's yeah, crazy. That was my brother, bro. That I nigga told on you. So, so how you feel, how you feel about that, bro? It was devastating. I was like my brother. We grew up in New York together. He was kids. Damn. crazy. What happened to him? Where he at? You know, I was just telling the people in um in, in last night's episode, I was just talking about you. It was a good thing we got you on the show today. Cause I was just telling the people, not me, like like we like brothers, bro. Every time I was in that motherfucking gang block, I turned around. Your big ass was in that shit. So I know you for a while, you know what I mean? I don't been in the world with you. Stand up dude, man. Dude, dude was a real stand up dude, man. Um how 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 was how was this this bid like? What was it like, and and how did it feel being sentenced to ten to ten? This is the longest bid you ever been sentenced to, right? Yeah, fact fact. How did it feel being sentenced to, to ten years? Cause that's a decade, bro. How does it feel being sentenced to that shit? Damn. I can't take care of my kids. 
Yeah. That was like the, the hardest part about it, like the kids, like, you know, not seeing my kids. My, my son was six. Wow. 13 now. A man. My son, I was 12. He's 19. Got Thank shot in the head three years ago. I still probably responsible. What? Do you think that do you think that you going to jail influenced his decisions and in, in the, the, the lifestyle that, that that he chose? Nah, not at all. Because they didn't know me. They, the better that you know, they yeah. didn't know that person. Oh, okay. They didn't even know nothing. They didn't even they never saw your father like that. Oh, okay. They saw daddy daddy was home, daddy paid the bills, they thought daddy was working every day, daddy woke up cooked breakfast. <laughs> you said they know that they know that 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 person. They know Jack. They know the real me. You said they knew. Uh huh. You said they knew a good person. They ain't know that. You said they knew. Boy, I was moving. Yeah. Right. You said they knew Jack. Yeah, they knew Jack. They ain't know better. All right, go ahead. What you were saying? No, nah, I was just saying the way I was moving in the crib, they would have never thought I was I was moving like that in the street. Hmm. So, so, it's not over though, brother. What was, what, what, what was, what was the time like for you in there, like? Ah, shit. You know, I know the answer to this, to, to that question, because I've been with you, anyway. Anyway, I turn around, you was there. So, but, but for the people, let them know your journey, bro. I'm saying it was, that shit was hard. Ten years, ten years. Yeah. You Say that. Say that again? I said, go ahead, tell him, say that. Tell him about that pain, bro. What's up, bro? Yo, how the fuck? Where'd you get the strength from? This is the same thing I asked Earl. You know, Bezel know Earl, too, because Bezel was with me when I was with Earl. Where you get the strength from to not give up, like, and not let this shit break you, bro? That's a good question. Where I get the strength from? I don't know what. I don't know. 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 I don't I feel like I can't let this break me. Mm. Everybody got hurdles in life. We got obstacles. So you're going to go through some things. You got to go through adversity. And I feel like the adversity molded me. Wow. I feel like the adversity molded me. Do you know? Another thing to it. What's that? I really feel that. You have one minute left. Point. You know, you do, you do things. You got to pay for them. So I kind of walked into this thinking. You know, I did a time. I did a crime. I got to do the time. Mm. 
Hey yo, they you know they just gave us the one minute morning warning, brother. Um, you got anything that you want to say? Anybody you want to shout out? Anything you want to say to anybody? Cause you know this shit going out there to to the world. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna just give you the last thirteen seconds to say what you gotta say, bro. My last words. I don't know, man. If you know somebody locked up, you say you lost somebody locked up, reach out to him. Mm. Niggas ain't here depressed, they broke, they don't lost their kids, they family, they crib, niggas lost their job. At least they ain't here treating niggas like we like they human. Mm. Niggas lose their dignity every day. A little love from you is monumental. It ain't always about money, that's the picture, just turn the phone on. Yeah. Niggas ain't here just want to know we ain't, we ain't forgotten. Mm -hmm. Thank you for using. I love you, bro. Bye. That's the bro, man. Good dude, man. Um, that was powerful, man. He he said he said a lot of good shit in that in, in, in that little segment right there, the little fifteen minutes that he got. Um, I think that's enough to wrap this 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 session up. You know what I mean? And do the right thing. Hit the subscribe button, man. Support me. I'm out here. I'm trying to because I was just in there with them, so I know what it's like. And now I'm out here and I'm trying to be a voice for them people. And I'm trying to make sure that the brothers in there that's been silenced has a chance to be heard, man. So help me. Help me help them. You know what I mean? Because you never know. It might be you in that situation Situation one day. It might be your brother. It might be your son. It might be your father. It might be your cousin. But coming from somebody that's been there... And, and you just hearing it from somebody that's still there going through it. And I'm going to continue to give y'all conversations and testimonies and whatever I could bring y'all. As raw as I could bring it from inside there to y'all. Hit that subscribe button, man. Follow me on Instagram. W-E-S-S-M-I-T-H dot one two nine, man. Any questions you got, you DM me. I will definitely get back to you. Any critiques you got or anything you want to say or you might have somebody in there that you want me to reach out to. Holler at me. Let me know, man. Till then, man. Peace.